welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we've got a video that I'm sure many of you will be very interested in. We're looking at multitasking performance when gaming, something we discussed at length in a recent Q&A series, but this time we're getting out the test systems for some benchmarks. But before we do... Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by ASUS's latest range of ROG anime peripherals. The new ROG Strix Flare 2 Anime Gaming Mechanical Keyboard features an Anime Matrix LED display, 8000Hz polling rate, ROG NX Mechanical Switches or Cherry MX Switches, swappable switches, metal media controls, and a wrist rest with light diffuser. And there's also the new ROG Delta S Anime Lightweight Gaming Headset with a customizable Anime Matrix display, Hi-Fi ESS 9281 Quad DAC, AI noise cancelling mic, and is compatible with PC, PlayStation 5, and Nintendo Switch. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so this is quite a complex subject, and it's one that's often misunderstood by gamers, especially when discussing CPU performance. For example, we recently compared the Ryzen 5 5600 and Ryzen 7 5700X in a wide range of games, and found that on average, the 8-core CPU was just 5% faster, which wasn't terribly surprising, but there were a surprising number of viewers who claimed their data didn't come close to reflecting real-world gaming performance. And this is because gamers often watch or listen to YouTube videos while gaming, uh, they have programs such as Discord open, allowing them to chat with teammates, and sometimes they even stream slash screen share using Discord. So the claim is these applications require more cores and therefore the 5700X will end up being noticeably faster than the 5600. Now, we've done our best to explain that these relatively light background tasks don't weigh heavily on modern processors, and providing you have enough system memory, they won't make a noticeable difference. We've also explained that anyone can easily verify this for themselves by running said programs and then monitoring the system resources. Despite this though, lots of gamers still claim that you need eight cores for gaming if you wanna watch a YouTube video and chat with your friends on Discord. Of course, claiming you need or don't need a certain core count for gaming is wrong in on itself, and as we've explained, you're much better off talking about overall CPU performance. Anyway, for this test, we're again taking the Ryzen 5 5600 and Ryzen 7 5700X and comparing them with various active background tasks. Now, based on feedback from viewers, it does sound like many of you do watch YouTube videos or have them playing in the background or on a second monitor while you game, often just play music or a podcast for some background noise. Then as you'd expect, most of you have Discord open with a few active servers and a chat room. So I thought the best place to start would be with the Ryzen 5 5600 installed, and then with the system at idle, monitor how many resources these individual workloads require. So let's start with Discord. Open with a few active chat servers, but mostly idle. Here we see that Discord is using between 1 to 2% of our Ryzen 5 5600 processor, so a negligible load, that I don't expect will impact gaming performance, but of course we will look at that soon. I have seen quite a few viewers claim that the voice processing features of Discord require a lot of CPU overhead, stuff like noise reduction, echo cancellation, and auto gain control, so I enabled all of those features and then made a test call to our video editor Balin. This made very little difference to the CPU usage of Discord, again, generally sitting at around 2% with the occasional and very brief spikes to three to four and even 5%. But by and large, CPU usage was now at like two to 3%. Now for streaming, we've always recommended you go for at least the next tier in CPU performance, as this is a bit more than just a background task and typically does require quite a lot of processing power. However, with Discord, the CPU usage was still fairly low and only a single core is used heavily, typically hovering around 11% with brief spikes as high as 15%. So you could probably get away with the Ryzen 5 5600 here with minimal impact to your frame rate. But again, we will look at that shortly. Then next, I wanted to see how much CPU usage with the Ryzen 5 5600 a 4K YouTube video uses in the Chrome browser. It's also important to note that opening 10, 20, 30, or even more Chrome tabs has little to no impact on CPU usage, providing those tabs are idle. It'll just eat up system memory if available, though that does allow for seamless switching of tabs. Now, with a 4K 60fps video playing, the 5600 saw average CPU usage of just 4%, lower than even I was expecting. There was the very brief and occasional spike to 7 to 9%, but typically, utilization here was again very low. Also, if I understand your feedback correctly, most of you aren't actually watching the video while gaming, or at least not very closely. 
and therefore opt for 1080p playback or even lower, which would make sense for those of you with more limited internet connections. Therefore, I've measured utilization while playing a 1080p 60fps video and found that average CPU usage halved just 2%, but often sat at 1% with occasional and very brief spikes as high as 5%. So I think given all this information, the most realistic and likely configuration would be Discord running with a few active servers plus an active call using the voice processing features we spoke of, along with Chrome open playing a 1080p video, and for that I used my recent 1080p 60fps stream. With both of those applications active, average CPU usage sat at just 4%, this time with occasional and very brief spikes as high as 9%. Having learnt all of that, the bulk of our testing will be done using this configuration, so an active Discord call with a 1080p 60fps YouTube video playing in a Chrome browser. Now I can of course do a lot more testing like this in future with different configurations, but I really felt this was a good starting point. I will also briefly look at 4K YouTube plus Discord chat and then 4K YouTube plus Discord streaming. As for the hardware configuration, I'm using 32 gigabytes of dual rank dual channel DDR4 3200 memory on the MSI X570S Carbon Max Wi-Fi motherboard. Then the Ryzen 5 5600 and Ryzen 7 5700X will be tested with the Radeon RX 6950 XT at 1080p and 1440p with SAM enabled. Okay, let's get into the data. Starting with ACC, we see that the 1% low performance of the 5700X and 5600 is basically identical. However, with a video playing while on a Discord call, we see that the 1% lows of the 5600 dropped by 10%, while the 5700X dropped by just 5%. The margins for the average frame rates though did remain much the same. And a similar thing is seen even at 1440p. The 5700X dropped just 4% of its original performance, while the 5600 dropped by 7%. So the 5700X is clearly handling the added load better, but overall the difference is rather minuscule and the 5600 is still enabling a perfectly smooth gaming experience. It is also worth noting that we are using the medium quality settings here with the 6950XT. So cranking up the visuals will shift performance limits more towards the GPU, which will reduce the margins further. We'd also see a smaller margin when using a lesser GPU. Now a game that often comes up in these multitasking discussions is Counter-Strike Global Offensive, as here competitive gamers are after every last frame possible. Thing is though, CSGO is really limited by core IPC, as it's a very lightly threaded game, given it uses the DirectX 9 API. What's interesting here is that the margins actually close up between the 5600 and 5700X, with the background tasks active. So whereas the 5700X was 5% faster with no background tasks, it was repeatedly just a percent faster with YouTube and Discord active. Either way though, for older games that are thread dependent, going from six to eight cores with a modern processor is going to make no difference as much of the CPU is still sitting around doing absolutely nothing, even with a YouTube video playing and a Discord call. Halo Infinite was tested using dulled down quality settings, but even so, we appear to be mostly GPU limited, and although the background task did reduce 1% lows at 1080p by 10% for the 5600, we saw a similar 9% hit for the 5700X. However, increasing the resolution to 1440p, which further increased the GPU bottleneck, we see that the multitasking performance hit is now no more than 5%. So most gamers playing with higher visual quality settings or a slower GPU will see no perceivable performance hit when watching a YouTube video or chatting on Discord while gaming, at least in Halo Infinite. Next up, we have Forza Horizon 5, which is another modern game that doesn't use the CPU all that heavily, and as a result, the 5600 and 5700X saw no performance drop off when running our background tasks. Not much more to say here, really, so let's move on. Far Cry 6 is another game that really only hammers a few CPU threads, and as a result, despite the results being heavily CPU limited, the 5600 and 5700X deliver similar results even with background tasks active. At most, we're looking at a 3-4% to hit to 1% lows, and that reduction was seen for both CPUs. Moving on to Watch Dogs Legion, which is a CPU demanding title, we see that without any additional applications running, the 5700X is 6% faster than the 5600 when comparing the average frame rate, and 5% faster for the 1% lows. Now, with YouTube playing and Discord active, the average frame rate of the 5700X is 7% greater, while the 1% lows are 9% higher, so an improvement of 4% there for the 5700X over the 5600. 
And this is evidence that the extra cause can help, as you'd naturally expect, but even with a demanding title such as Watch Dogs Legion, the improvement is minimal and won't be something gamers can perceive. Not only that, but by the time we get to 1440p, the margin is entirely eliminated, and now both CPUs see a 2-3% performance hit with the background tasks active. Rainbow Six Extraction can play at hundreds of frames per second using modest hardware, and here we're using the medium quality preset. With the background tasks active, we saw no performance hit as frame rates remained identical or virtually identical. Assassin's Creed Valhalla does see a small performance hit with the background tasks active, particularly to the 1% lows. At the 1% lows of the 5700X dropped by 6%, while the 5600 saw an 8% drop. So again, the 8-core processor did fare slightly better, but once again, we're only talking about, well, a negligible performance difference. Last up, we have Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, which I have tested with a few different configurations, and we'll start with the 1080p YouTube video plus Discord voice chat data first. Now, at 1080p, the 5700X and 5600 saw a mere 3% hit to 1% lows with the background tasks active. Interestingly though, the 5700X saw a bigger hit to the average frame rate, suggesting that it was able to drive higher maximum frame rates without the background tasks active. In either case, the gaming experience was identical using either CPU with or without our background applications running. Now, I've decided to run the Rainbow Six Siege benchmark again, but this time with a 4K video playing, and again found that the performance hit was similar with the 5700X and 5600 actually ending up closer in terms of performance with the background tasks active, at least at 1080p. Then finally, I once again ran the Rainbow Six Siege benchmark, but this time with the 4K video playing in conjunction with Discord's screen sharing. And again, this quite unexpectedly reduced the performance of the 5700X and 5600 to basically the same level, despite the 5700X being up to 9% faster without the background tasks active. So that's probably the opposite of what you'd expect to see here. I have to assume there is some kind of Zen 3 architectural bottleneck that's limiting performance with these additional tasks running, and the extra cores of the 5700X simply aren't required or can't be used to overcome this limitation. So there you have it, what I believe is pretty conclusive evidence that playing YouTube videos and chatting on Discord doesn't require oodles of CPU resources, and in fact it uses very little of a modern CPU, and these applications, they certainly don't require dedicated cores. Now, none of this is to say that gamers shouldn't buy a Zen 3 CPU with more cores, or any CPU for that matter, such as the Ryzen 7 5700X, as there are multiple reasons for why you might want to do this. But you certainly don't need that level of processing power to game. So if you're on a tight budget, a cheaper part like the Ryzen 5 5600 will serve you well and likely be sufficient for years to come. And I know many of you are gaming with active background tasks using this CPU or a similar CPU and have reported no performance related issues. On a side note, I know there'll be some of you in the comments section requesting I test actually CPU intensive games such as Anno, Factorio and City Skylines for example, but these games will provide similar results to that of Far Cry 6 and CSGO for example. This is a common misconception that we regularly see in the comments section. These games, while often CPU limited, are not CPU intensive. Sadly, they suffer from a software bottleneck that sees them peg just one to two cores of a modern processor at 100% while leaving the other four plus cores doing virtually nothing. And you don't need four or more Zen 3 cores to run a YouTube video and Discord. Now, the only reason these games see performance gains with modern CPUs is because of the IPC uplift, not the increase in core count. The more cores you add, the more cores you have sitting around it doing nothing when playing these lightly threaded games. Then if you plan on streaming, a higher core count CPU of the same architecture will be of benefit. Though having said that, if you're streaming using a single PC, you're almost always going to be better off using your GPU, and NVENC appears to be the best option here. Otherwise, do what I've done and build a second less expensive PC to handle all the encoding, and there are other benefits beyond the stream quality to such a solution, such as stability, but I won't get too derailed by the streaming angle. In short, if you want to stream from your gaming PC, more cores will help, though I recommend you don't use the CPU anyway. But I guess the point is, if you're doing something else beyond light background tasks, which is exactly what Discord and playing a YouTube video is for a modern processor, then spending more money on a more capable CPU is obviously going to be of benefit. 
Still, I strongly believe for most gamers, this is going to be a very niche use case, and I doubt encoding a 4K video in, let's say, Premiere on a 5700X is going to lead to a desirable gaming experience anyway. On that note, I can't really think of a realistic scenario where the 5700X will still deliver an acceptable gaming experience, but the 5600 would crumble. Of course, I am open to suggestions and more than happy to keep this multitasking benchmark series going, so as always, provide your feedback and suggestions below as it might lead to our next video. For now though, I am done with this one, so if you enjoyed it, please do give it a like, subscribe for more content, and if you'd like to become a Harbour Unbox community member, we do have Floatplane and Patreon, links for those in the video description. Either one of them will give you access to our monthly live stream, so we do that for members, we talk about interesting topics, whatever you guys want to talk about really, and we have an exclusive Discord server, again for members, uh, behind the scenes content and Q and A's. So a lot of cool stuff there. If you're interested, check it out. But if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.